Now then, we're on with the grid in, solar grid inverters today. So we have an Omnic. Yep. And it's got a reasonable amount of gravity about it. And it does have a lovely huge aluminium heat sink on the back which we'll have a look about later first though we'll plug it into the test equipment and um, you'll have seen the video where I describe this test equipment it's quite rural but it works it's nothing very spectacular I think several other uh, YouTubers have used this idea and so um, anyway I'll do a, I'll do a link to that video at the end of this one just in case you want to know how to build one right um, let's crack on with this it has the ubiquitous round pin mains plug but as I've said before you can replace that with just a standard gland and wire directly onto the board and we'll have a look at that later on so this this bit here doesn't come off that way it comes off this way and We'll have a look at that later, but you've got to be careful. Don't try and pull it off that way, it's got to lift up. So here's the details. V DC MPP 120 to 450. Yep. And maximum output 2000 watts. But you wouldn't want to run it like that continuously, would you? So this this screen looks very familiar to a lot of other inverters, like the Solar Rivers and the Afors, that sort of thing. But this is switching on quite quickly. So it's obviously a G83 stroke 2. There we go away we go I'll just turn the power down to see what happens if I yeah it all looks very familiar doesn't it That's a two kilowatt. E total eight thousand five hundred and twenty nine kilowatt hours. Right, so it's a very simple um, system there. That'll do. Okay, so let's dig into it and see if we can make any sense out of it. So this cover, there's this set of rails there, which clip onto that bit there. And also, just there, there's a clip there. And a clip there, and they go down on those little recesses there. So if you try and pull it backwards or down, you will damage it. It's got to be lifted up. Now it looks like this end cover is screwed on. Now let's have an investigate, but first I'll remove all the plugs so we can twizzle this around quite easily. So here's the heatsink and 
we have a lot of posi screws there and just there as I move that around there we've got the don't violate this or else your uh, warranty is void and it also looks like quite interestingly you could get away with making your own um, or just putting some screws in the wall with washers for a mounting bracket now, I don't have the mounting bracket for this so I'm only guessing but there are one two three four of those holes with slots so it's not difficult to mount this on on a wall somewhere in the shade in a cool place with plenty of ventilation not in the loft right I'm going to undo these screws then so Steve Upton gave me this Bosch impact driver and the batteries were a bit duff but um, I've changed a couple of cells in it these are nickel metal hydride and it's great it's done a huge amount of work and it's my go-to impact screwdriver it seems to have a slower rate than the Makita one that I've got and I think there's a lot to be said for nickel metal hydride um, batteries in so much as you don't have a BMS whoopee there's a nice thing yeah, because that's the problem with a lot of uh, lithium, isn't it? We've got three screws down there that I can't get to with that impact driver. But I've changed. We've got a uh, grid set of grid connected panels. Um, the other side of the field and when I first put them there I used some original DC wiring and so therefore I was having DC coming across the meadow it's only about 50 to 80 meters or something and the inverter in the shed. Well, I've changed that. Now I've put the inverter over there. Right, we've got some more screws here. They really like to go to town on the screws, don't they? I'm hoping the top comes off. Right, these are little countersunk units quite short this magnet by the way is uh, out of a computer hard drive rare earth magnets neodymium that's the one I was using when we were messing around with the uh, the Dyson battery vacuum cleaner right so what's going to happen is the back going to come off the top's going to come off okay let me turn this round so we can have a look inside the wires are a little bit short. Right, how are we going to do this? We need something just to support. Ah, there we go. That 
that'll do. Bit latchety, but so uh, what have we got? Let's move the camera in a bit. That's a huge capacitor block. Yep. Capacitors. Nothing. There's a, a relay under there. Yeah, and two relays there. This sort of layout reminds me of. Hang on, I'm just going to go and remind myself what they are. Of an ever solar. Little relays there, and a fuse down there. Yeah, it's very much like an ever solar. And they were all right. It's the whole um, the business of overpowering them and uh, disconnecting um, in high generation points damages the relay contacts. Yeah, so several of the ones, uh, the um, ever solars, had got that problem. I think there was early days when people were overdriving inverters because they were expensive and they were putting a couple of extra panels on so that during the winter you were getting great generation or better but in the summer the inverters were switching off because they were getting too hot especially when they were fitted in lofts which is a disaster and there's a there's a, a video about extending inverter life on my solar inverter playlist if you haven't seen that it's well worth watching but this looks all right it struck up quite nicely there's nothing untoward but this huge um, heat sink is a very good thing yeah brilliant okay I'm gonna put that back together oh one last thing there's the mains input so if you don't have a plug and don't want to buy one then you could undo that and bring the cables directly onto live neutral and earth and they're a spade connector do a good job though and have a beefy enough cable um, this is a two kilowatt so you know, maximum output is eight amps so it doesn't have to be monster but you might as well make it half decent you, know, you don't want to um, build in resistances and uh, loss of power into the system do you so there you are it's quite a neat little unit really fit for purpose don't put too many panels on it but that's the same with all inverters hopefully you found this useful and uh, if so, please subscribe. And as I've said, there is a whole solar grid inverter playlist that's worth wandering through. And I will catch up with you soon. Cheers for now.